Hi everyone and uh, today in this very important I consider it important tips and tricks video I'm going to talk about caching so before I begin I would like to ask you all to like subscribe and share my channel with your friends if you like my videos it motivates me to make much more cool videos and hopefully useful videos so now back to caching what is caching so looking at this result from Google search, so this is from Oxford Dictionary. So storing data in memory or providing hardware with cache memory, storing away for future use, right? Um, if we look at more technical definition, it's um, it says like it's from Amazon, this result, and it says cache is a high speed data storage layer uh, so that request from future re future requests for the data are served up faster than it's possible possible by accessing the data's primary storage location. So, in to put it in like very simple words, I would say caching is storing the process results for a given function with its arguments. So, if you call a function with the same arguments again, it does not need to process the data, and this reduces the response time um, of the function when it's called with the arguments that have already been, that have already been processed. So how to how to use caching? There are many many different ways to do caching in of functions in Python. I'm going to talk about three of my favorite ways uh, in which you can cache a function in Python. So. For this video, I'm going to use the BERT model that we trained. So I'm going to use uh, the API that we created using Flask. So if you're not familiar with that, you can watch uh, the previous uh, one of the previous videos in which we, 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 we built that. And the link to that video, you can find it in the description box. So uh, first and a very simple way to use caching is to use some kind of uh, a global dictionary so what do i mean by that so this was the code that we create so we have a function for uh predicting se uh, sentiment a uh, given sentence and a model and we have uh this predict endpoint so now what what we can do is we can create a global dictionary so let's say we, we will make some changes to this function and this will be prediction dictionary so that's just a empty dictionary so here what i can do is i can probably remove this model from here and uh this one will become model the global model okay so now we have to create a function def predict from cache so now this takes the same uh, argument sentence and we say if sentence in prediction dict return prediction dict sentence else then you do sentence prediction on this sentence result um, and then you save the result in this prediction dict sentence is equal to result and you return result so now we have a predict from cache function so let's see if this works um, so here we are getting sentence prediction but instead of that now we will doing predict from cache we have already removed the model argument so um okay that's that's what we have let's also import 
time to track the time and uh, now we can do start time time dot time and here will be end time equal to uh, or, or let's just do it like this uh, time taken will be str of uh, time dot time so the current time minus the start no not this one start time and now we can try to run it and see if this this works um, so let's start terminal uh, terminal and we go to src python app.py and I just hope it works okay okay I think I've removed the vocab so let me get the vocab in okay so the model file was missing so I can start it again python app.py and yeah it will take a little bit, few, few seconds to start and we can go here so let's try predicting this one you are amazing so 0 0.07 seconds so which is the first request now i try it again and that's 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 seconds the same results but way less time more than thousand times less time uh, what you can also do is uh, I hate this video let's see this one new request it's a negative sentiment which is correct 0 0.04 seconds and if I have the same request again it's going to take way less time much less time and yeah that saves a lot of time and a lot of uh, uh, for the API it saves a lot of time and now we can see a little bit more um, so another way of doing this is using a LRU cache so what does LRU so <coughs> Imagine you have a dictionary as a, as in like the first method, right? But now, um, what LRU will do is so LRU stands for uh, least recently used. So LRU will uh, keep in its memory only the most recently used uh, arguments. So it's very easy to use LRU cache in Python. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do import func tools so which is a python module so it's used for higher order function and uh, functions uh, that act on or return other functions so that's from the uh, func tool libraries and now i'm going to do is i'm uh, okay let's keep this one but uh, this is this so this was the original function sentence prediction so i'm going to do here add a decorator func tools dot lru cache and max size so max size is nothing but how many requests you want uh, to be saved so max size will be we can do something like 128 so if you do none then it's saving all the requests um, and then everything remains the same except for predict from cache we can just do go back to sentence prediction the original function and let's start restart the api app.py and okay we are going back to this one i hit this video so 0 0.07 the first request and second request is 4.5 into 10 to the power minus 5 which is very low and that's what we want that's what we want to do 
this is a great video positive sentiment 0 0.04 seconds and now we run the same thing again and 6 uh, into 10 to the power minus 5 seconds <laughs> way less so that yeah it's, it's actually pretty easy neat tricks that you can use uh, in, in your everyday job and uh, you can make a lot of things faster you just have to be careful that you use cash only when it's required not everywhere and another way of doing this is this is my favorite way import joblib so this is my favorite for a few reasons uh, in the first two methods we saw that uh, we use lru cache or we use a dictionary to save them but uh, both of them save you save in the in memory so everything is in the ram so if you increase the size your ram will explode at some point your app will crash so instead of doing that you can also save it on disk and that's what we are going to achieve with joblib so now joblib has a memory module so i will say memory equal to joblib dot memory and you need to specify where you want to store it so let's say i specify in i want to store an input folder right and it has a verbose parameter i'm just going to say that verbose is zero for now so we got this one now all you need to do is replace func tools with memory dot cache you don't need any max size it's going to capture all of them but it's going to save it on disk so that's the advantage of using joblib memory it's going to use save everything on disk but that's also the disadvantage why because it's saving on disk so it's going to take some time to read the results right so let's start it again python app.py and we have memory.cache and we haven't changed anything else in the code and we'll go here this took 0 0.08 seconds and this took 0 0.001 seconds so now you see that using joblib it's much faster but it's slower than when it's in memory so yeah that's that's the thing you have to decide so you have to <laughs> pick if you want to use joblib and save it in uh, on disk or not so now you can see we go to input folder okay let's let's go here and so here is a folder called joblib and inside that you have okay so bird sentiment app main function so it's going to save them so if you go to that you will see what's saved sentence prediction that's the function name inside that you have this thing and uh, the cache itself and the code so if you do cat it will have all your code for that function and um, the function that you're caching and if you go to this request you have a metadata and a pickle file for output so if you do cat metadata you will see okay this was the original input arguments this is a great video and this was this took 0 0.06 seconds for it so it's saving everything on disk and you can also do uh, in code you can do memory dot clear and then it's going to clear everything that you have in memory but that's something that you have to take a look at so now i have also created a notebook and um, you see uh, here i'm importing func, func tools joblib time and numpy so i'm not going to do anything very interesting but i'm, I'm just going to show you the different ways you can do caching so I create a folder called joblib cache initialize the memory as in the other code then I have a dictionary cache now I create a long running function so this function does nothing but it just sleeps for three seconds 
and it says if the number is greater than zero then return the square root of the number otherwise return the number itself right so we have this function and now we have a wrapper function dictionary cache predict so that one takes the number checks if it's in the dictionary cache if it is then it returns otherwise it executes the function the long running function so now we have the same function long running function underscore func tools just to see so we have here we have the lru cache and the function remains the same and then we have a long running function job loop the same function it's just copy paste of code and memory.cache that's the job lib memory so you have a list of numbers so i wrote down numbers from 1 to 10 and now this is a uh, hundred thousand numbers in this list so if you if you do it using the original function it's going to take three seconds per request to that function so i'm not we are not going to do that um what we are going to do instead is just run and see the timings for the rest three so this one finished in 8.8 .8 microseconds so now you can imagine if, if we would have calculated for each and every request to this function it would have been hours many hours and similarly you can see that the times for these functions will also be quite less anyways uh, so we can also commit the code and see how much time it takes uh, so okay so let's see let's wait for some more time so func tools is a little bit faster and then we have this one which is not done yet <laughs> still running seems like it's slow and now it's finished yeah so we can see 7.63 microseconds for dictionary uh, method using func tools it took 7.39 and this one uh, job lib is also 7.39 so which is okay i would say and this is what you have in the dictionary so square root nothing interesting here so yeah this uh, notebook is available uh, now and take a look and if you have any questions feel free to ask me i hope this was helpful for you and there's a lot more cool stuff coming in the near future and if you like it then do click on the like button and subscribe and share it with your friends and thank you very much goodbye